Hello, and welcome to your Lansing Connection. I'm State Senator Nancy Cassis. Glad to be back with you with what is happening at the Capitol, things to keep you well informed. My guest today is Kathy Hookstra from the Mackinac Center based in Midland, Michigan. You know Kathy because she was on our program last time, and I've asked her to come back because we only really, in many ways, scratch the surface. And I think the message and the research that is done at the Mackinac Center is very important for my um, viewing audience to become acquainted with. So before I introduce Kathy, I'd like to say at the start of this program this month, Michigan, as we all know, is at a crossroads. We are in a state of transition. And largely this has occurred because of the very significant decline in manufacturing overall, but even more importantly, Michigan. We do believe that our state has many strengths and our people are resilient. And between all the resources that are here in Michigan, our great universities, our medical centers, our stupendous tourist attractions, our just the stamina of the business people and the workers in this state. We in Michigan will come out of this. We are all in this together and I can assure you that we are doing our very best every single day as your representatives and senators in Lansing to create a climate that will encourage fostering our economy again. The three E's, I like to call them the three E's, our economy, entrepreneurship, and education. Why entrepreneurship? Well, it is the small businesses in our state that create at least 70 to 75 percent of the jobs. And when people have jobs and are employed, they are contributing members, not only taking care of their own families, but also they're contributing revenue to the state so that we can afford our essential services. So with that introduction, I'm very pleased to bring back to you our guest, Kathy Hookstra. Oh, nice Welcome, to be here. Welcome, Kathy. Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting me back. I appreciate it. Well, you have come all the way down from Midland, mm -hmm. and you have had a connection not only with our program and myself, but really with the legislature in general. In fact, um, Mr. Lefebvre, who is the overall director, met with us yesterday in my office, and we continue to work together. It's an excellent working relationship. But for our audience, just give us a little bit of sense of what the Mackinac Center's purpose, mission is. Absolutely. Um, well, in uh, a casual terms, we're called a think tank. Uh, what that means formally, a little more formally, is we are research and education institution. And we are nonpartisan, we are nonprofit, therefore we do not lobby. And when you mention that our policy analysts do meet with legislators, it is because uh, for the most part, that you legislators, um, in looking for uh, information, in looking for data, in right. looking for facts, in looking for, um, when, when you are forming your policy recommendations and your decision-making process, uh, a lot of you and your colleagues do seek out the advice of our policy analyst. And that's what we're here for. <laughs> no, matter, no matter if you have a D or an R or an I or an L or whatever after your name, that's what we're here for. We've been doing it for 20, uh, 20, oh, 21 years now and going strong. And why this is so important is you act as an adjunct to our own resources. Mm -hmm. You say you are a research think tank and you certainly are. But you've um, upheld some of the most important principles that our Constitution was founded on and that our Revolutionary War was fought about absolutely no taxation without representation absolutely and it, you're absolutely right and um, it, it, yeah it would uh, uh, behoove me to say too that we are free market uh, limited government um, and those are the principles and the values that that we stand for um, and I might add too 
you um, very much realize that good policy can only occur when there is sunshine in the whole process and the ability to obtain information, to disclose material, and to have overall transparency in government. And I've been working on that, and the Mackinac Center certainly has done a number of briefs to support those efforts. I'm glad that we now do have transparency law in place so that as a legislator, as chair of Senate Finance, for example, we can gain documents from not only Treasury, not individual sure. filings, if you will, that's confidential, but by sector. We can get that information now. Also from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation so that we really can begin to measure the effectiveness of programs. And in saying that, I'd like to start out with a major uh, report that was just recently released. It's the second mm -hmm. part of what may be a three-part report commissioned by the Michigan Education Association uh, in working with Patrick Anderson of the Anderson Group here in Lansing. And the second report deals specifically with tax expenditures. And let me explain that. That is foregone revenue mm -hmm. to the state because of certain programs, refundable credits or abatements or specialized tax breaks that give some companies a foot up, an advantage over others. Would you like to share some of the findings that are, I think are, they're not a surprise to me. Right. And, not and a surprise. And they're not a, really a surprise to uh, the folks at the Mackinac Center. Uh, what is interesting, though, is uh, wh when, it, when it all comes out in the wash is that the Michigan Education Association, which commissioned this study, and the Mackinac Center mm -hmm. um, are actually, if you will, on the same page about the effectiveness of these programs. And let's back it up to last May. Mm -hmm. That's when the first phase of this study was released. Right. Uh, the Anderson Group looked at eight incentive programs, uh, which totaled uh, $900 million in tax breaks from 2008. As you mentioned, these come in the form of tax credits. Uh, they might be in the form of tax refunds or, or what have you. But what it means is that uh, through these eight programs, the state uh, or a state agency decides who uh, is going to be the quote unquote winner of this tax break. Therefore, a company will come in, uh, and as you mentioned, that's foregone tax revenue because this uh, company uh, or a type of industry will get a certain break. Now, the study uh, back in uh, May of last year when it was released, yes. um, out of the eight programs, uh, it found uh, the film incentive program, which you and I have talked about a great deal, uh, was actually the least effective of all the programs, and that is a refundable tax uh, credit program. That means they get money at the end of showing that they have produced um, a movie here right. or some other like a documentary they not only get their taxes totally wiped out they don't pay taxes in the state and they get a check in the mail and a, most of that money goes for salaries above the line which is going right out of our state likely to California. California does need money, but they don't need Michigan's money. They don't need Michigan's money, that's right. Well, so just a few weeks ago, as you mentioned, phase two of this study uh, came out, and it looked at, uh, uh, I believe, most of the same programs. And again, uh, it looked into them uh, in, a, in a little bit more detail. Um, but it did find, again, that uh, some of Michigan's targeted tax programs are either uh, not effective at all, or at least not as effective as maybe an alternative uh, type of uh, tax reform or broad-based tax relief might be as an, alt as an alternative. 